So nice and uncomfortable because we don't really know what to do. Gregory, you can stop clapping now. Thank you. Um, what are we calling this, by the way? What's the name of this? Nick, any ideas? Okay, we just go around. And yeah, no. No ideas. Uh, too much time on our hands. Podcast and an unhealthy obsession with war. <laughs> the podcast where Sam knows history and the rest of us just kind of like nod. <laughs> uh huh, that's right. <laughs> yes, okay. I remember when you that say, happened. You can say literally anything and we'd agree with it. So today's, uh, the first topic is part of our Ancient Generals series and it's for Alexander the Great, Alexander the Third of Macedon. Uh, but, uh, thank you, Gregory. Uh, so, Adrian, what are your initial? What do you know about Alexander so far? What's... Um, oh, I know so much about Alexander. <laughs> I, I, I pretty much I'm the authority, but I'm I'm gonna let the I'm gonna give everyone else a chance to go first. Oh, boy. Nick, what do you know about? Alexander? He was a great king. <laughs> uh, his dad was Philip the Second. Um, he took over after Philip II died. He conquered most of the known world at the time. Good, good, good. Um, Give us a little trailer of Alexander's life. He tried to in Asia world. Minor. Well, he did. He did. He did. All right, so he walked across start... the desert and made all of his troops give him his, their water twice. Actually, he did oh, twice. two times. We'll, we'll learn about this. Enough. We'll get this a little in there. Um, wait, the Thebians. Yeah, he went after them. Which, all right. He, well, okay. All right. Spoiler Greeks, alert. Okay, spoiler well, alert. Okay. Okay, so Alexander the Great is born in 356 in Pella, Macedon, the ancient capital. His mom is Olympias, who's insane. She's also not Macedonian. She's from Epirus, which will, which is important later, but for now it doesn't. We don't talk about that. His dad is Philip II, who's as a... As I mentioned. That's right, as Nick. So, OG. Yeah, well, OG with one eye, because he never got <laughs> stabbed out with an arrow. Uh, and he was obviously raised as a prince, so he had a really tough life, you know. Lots of wine and parties and education. And Must have been horrible. what's weird with him is that his mythology yeah, actually started. Yeah, yeah, I'll see. Okay. His mythology started for him when, <laughs> when he was actually like twelve, and it happened in his lifetime at once. When he went to, he wanted a horse because, I guess that's what princes want for their birthday when he was 12 <laughs> and uh philip took him to the i don't know the horse show is that like would that be yeah. the appropriate yeah, that's it that's it <laughs> the new 2018 epicurean stallion i yeah. guess and it was going crazy it's a it was a black horse with a white star on its head and then the and then alexander touched it right and <laughs> uh, yeah that actually yes and it had an ox's head like shape on its ass and uh so he jumped on there, and he was like, I want it, I want it. And it was going nuts and, like, kicking people. And but it didn't kick it, Alexander. It caused, yeah, well, <laughs> Alexander whispered into its ear and tamed it. You are the chosen one. Bucephalus, <laughs> you are my chosen horse. And so he, at that moment, maybe tames and then... Bucephalus? Bucephalus. Oh. It's the name of the horse. It may be the most famous horse in history. Like, all of their generals named their horses Bucephalus because of that. And he then original. he rode Bucephalus for the rest of its life and for the majority of his life. Uh, at 13, he got a tutor from Philip II. A little known guy named Aristotle became his tutor. Sounds like a nerd to me. <laughs> yeah, only an, right? an influential thinker in, uh, in history. Who even is that? Um, and then when in 340... Who is Aristotle? Oh, no. In <laughs> <laughs> 340... Uh, Philip left to go attack Thrace, and they come back because they never really get tamed. And he basically leaves Alexander the keys to the empire. It's like, don't crash her kid. I guess was kind Can of his only thing. Doesn't Philip yeah, kind of conquer some back. other kingdom? So Philip, so let's give a little. I'll give you a little background here. Um, the Macedonians before Philip the Second were barbarians. The Greeks, uh, Plutarch talks about quote, the old racial rivalry between Macedonians and Greeks. So the Greeks looked down on the Macedonians as barbarians, and they were these wild tribes people who were uneducated in arts and philosophy and just ran around. All and, the good things. Right, yeah. And uh, the only thing the Macedonians wanted was to be Greek. That was their obsession, was to become like a Hellenistic kingdom. And uh, so Philip reinvents the 
form the hoplite formation and bases it on a pike phalanx and then is able to crush the Greeks because they've never seen that. Their spears are maybe mm-hmm. nine feet this long. This is thirteen feet long. Oh, you know, fifteen, yeah, fifteen to eighteen feet long pikes. And so when you are twice the range, you're gonna kill them before they can get to you. So he he conquers a bunch of the Greek city states. He also comes in right after the Peloponnesian Wars when they're in a state of weakness. Uh, they've bled each other dry, and then Philip, with his one good eye, is like, mine for the taking, I want a new empire. So he conquers most of the city-states, but Thrace is uh, to the east of Macedonia, so he goes there to conquer them, and while he's gone, the Mede tribe rebels in the northeast of Macedon, and so 16-year-old Alexander raises an army that his dad had left for him. And uh, then attacks, kills them all, of course, because they're wild tribes people who decided to meet the Pike Phalanx in open battle. And he conquers the city and names it Alexandropolis. Uh, one creative. Of, one of 70 cities he will later name after himself. 70. Humble. So, like, cool <laughs> yeah. Dude, right? Yeah, so his ego was really small from the beginning. Uh-huh. And then. And Doesn't he think he's, like, chosen by the gods to yeah. never be killed or, like... Yeah, well, he thinks he's, uh... We'll get into... I'll, I'll talk about that a little later, but, yeah, he does. He goes to Egypt and becomes... <laughs> the, also, his mom, basically, from the time that he could comprehend things, told him that Philip wasn't his dad. He was the son of Zeus. Uh, he's descended directly from Achilles, so he's destined to be a warrior. And remember, Aristotle's whole thing is the philosopher king. So humility runs in the family. Right, yeah, they're very good on that. And so he uh, he believes this, kind of honestly. And his mom's a little crazy. Maybe some... A little bit. Maybe, yeah, maybe some Freudian stuff in there. <laughs> well, probably, yeah. And uh, she's a very strong, powerful woman. And his wives are also strong, influential, powerful women like that. She's also... Look up. A lot like his mother, <laughs> maybe the same name. Uh, and he, uh, she was in a weird snake cult. That was kind of gross. Oh yeah, the sex cult, right? Yeah, no, that's a that's Augustus. She's in oh, a, okay. a snake cult, and so she's always, probably a sex cult. Probably so. a sex cult, but the focus was on snakes. So it was like, like a veneer of snakes and then lots of sex. Yeah, whereas Augustus, it was a veneer of sex and then lots of <laughs> <More> sex. <laughs> 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 okay, and then in, back to Philip. In 338, like Alexander... A cake made out of icing. Except on the made. inside, it's just uh, fleshy <laughs> sex bodies. <laughs> it's like and, there's some icing in Right. And, okay, all right, all right. Icing is icing made of snakes. It's hiding the <laughs> so same that's like thing. not a great cake. Yeah. In 338, uh, the last... These Athenians and Thebians, as Nick mentioned, rise up against Philip, and they challenge him to battle for one final... Uh, Greek versus Macedon, you know, winner of this goes home. So I wonder who wins. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, loser goes home. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Win- winner takes their home. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Philip, Philip leads an army of uh, about, about even, so it's about 30,000 each side. And they stretch the line two and a half miles long. Jesus. Yeah, right? Two and a half miles long of Athenians and Thebians. That's a long uh, Alexander has the left flank facing the Greek right, and Philip kind of has the rest. And they just, like, meet. And meet in the middle, and it's just a pushing match for hours and hours. And finally, Philip starts to wheel. He does a wheel formation, so he drops back. And Alexander takes... So there's a little bit of inconsistency here because we know it's the first battle that Alexander gets a senior position in. He's a, he's a general in his father's army now at 18. Nepotism. Just a little bit. Um, and he, But we don't know what he commanded. That's not really specified. The propaganda sources tell us that he commanded his favorite companion cavalry. Oh, didn't he defeat that uh, group of uh, 150 lovers? Yeah, the Thebians, yeah. The, the sacred band of yes. Thebes. So they were immortal. Yeah, they were I thought, remember that very well. They were thought to be immortal. And they'd even defeated the Spartans in battle many times. They're the greatest soldiers, arguably, of ancient Greece. There were 300 of them. They'd never lost in battle. And they were composed entirely of 150 gay couples. So he was basically up against gay SEAL Team 6. That needs to be a movie, I'm telling you right now. It actually sounds pretty badass. Yeah, they were were really badass troops. They just like gay sex. Yeah, 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 and... uh, Well, thank you for clarifying. So it says that he led his companion cavalry into a charge... 
and broke the Greek line, but a cavalry charge into a hoplite wall always works. Right. So he probably commanded a pike. Like, he yeah. probably commanded a pike phalanx. And so he punches... The, the point is that he does punch through the Greek line. He kind of takes his own initiative here. By the way, this is the most, like, ambitious person I've ever read about. Uh, he punches through the Greek line, surrounds them. Uh, now, the Macedonians say they kill all the 300 Thebians. Uh, they, the Thebians and the Roman era actually put up a statue. It's called the Lion of Kyrenea to honor the resting place of the 300 soldiers. Well, they excavated under it and they found the body of 254. And so they really, they like, they found these. That's probably... Accurate. Yeah, that's probably accurate. I don't know that all 300 died. Yeah. Um, but pretty darn close. Yeah, and... At least 200. And so then apparently Philip falls, sees the dead 300 of them and says, perish any man who suspects that these men either did or suffered anything unseemly. Now, we've got to remember, these are like propaganda sources, but right after that, he's, he's finally subdued the Greek city-states, and it's like, that's it. He, he's got Greece, which is what he wants. And then, he ever get Sparta? Yeah, they conquered Sparta. Okay, cool. Yeah, the Spartans, the Spartans at this point had weakened themselves yeah, yeah, yeah. so greatly what? that, like, you know, it was... No longer just even hoplite fights. It was like pike phalanxes, and even their like just ridiculous training couldn't help. Mm, they uh, did throw enough babies over cliffs. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just one more. Might have been. Right, uh, and then Philip marries this woman named Cleopatra. Who's that? Cleopatra of Macedon, Gregory. Thank <laughs> oh, you. Okay. Uh, not to be confused with Cleopatra of Egypt, Cleopatra Ptolemy, who it's pronounced Egypt. Egypt, it's not. Uh, <laughs> had Caesar's kid in right. quotes right. Uh, also and, was a cool cool lady <laughs> and so at, um, she was a cool cool she was a seductress but not Cleopatra of Macedon so they're having a big party to commemorate this wedding and uh, her uncle I think his name's Attalus says something along the lines of well now Philip has a true heir indicating that she'd either had the child or was Ooh. pregnant and he says something about Alexander being a bastard child because he's a half kid half Macedonian, uh, which means that he's not going to get the throne if this kid survives. So he freaks out, right, yeah, he, he freaks out and he, he punches or stabs Attalus. You mean he dies of natural causes? <laughs> well, like, at the party, and then Philip gets upset and tries to stab Alexander, and then is so drunk that he just falls on his face. And kills himself. No, no, he's still alive. But this is right before he, he wants to invade Persia, and Alexander says something about, like, uh, you want to run across the Hellespoint into Turkey, but you can't even like run across the room to get me. Um, so yeah, he and his dad had a very yeah he and his dad had a very loving relationship. Uh-huh. I'm going to be the emperor, and you aren't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and then in uh, in 336, um, Philip wait, is killed. Wait, 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 go back. How old was Alexander's brother when he punched him? Alexander, no, Alexander stabbed. punched the uncle of Cleopatra. Okay, uh, right. He did not punch his. Like infant brother. Yeah, I was gonna say that sounds. I think he just like. (laughs) Okay, yeah. Sorry, let me clear that. Yeah, okay. Um, so he uh. Right in the soft spot. In 336, (laughs) Philip is killed by his bodyguard and close friend Pausanias, and uh, he's then immediately hunted down and killed. They kill him without any trial, any explanation, and oh wait, now Alexander gets to take over. No contest. Mm. Cool. And then Cleopatra and her son go on a long vacation. Very long vacation. <laughs> Six feet underground. <laughs> uh, and, and now, yeah, now Alexander is the king of Macedon. Uh, I think he blames it on Persia. What he basically does is he takes this death of his father and blames it on everyone around him Persia. being in cahoots okay. and uses an excuse to invade all these different countries that he wanted to take over anyway. They Sounds killed good. my father. No, they did it. <laughs> they killed him, and then they knew about it. And the Indians they did it. <laughs> yeah. Bactria did it. Uh, and then he um, he kind of freaks out and is like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to invade Persia. It's mine now. I want Persia. I'm going to take it over. Um, so he has to fight Thrace first and finish them. He goes into Thrace. He conquers Thebes again. So Thebes holds out the city itself. He conquers it. He apparently kills everyone inside the city and then leaves only... Temples. Yeah, he leaves temples. Oh. And, 
And so this is just a big thing. This goes to this will play in later. You'll see how controlled by emotions he he's a total genius, but he's just completely controlled by his emotions. And he's very. I mean, this kid's eighteen years old, and he's yeah. he's like taking it on himself to to conquer the world. And uh, so he finally he gets his dad's army. I feel inadequate, Adrian. <laughs> Um, this isn't no, that's, that's cool. Right. <laughs> so, size of your empire doesn't matter. <laughs> right. uh, he takes he takes his dad's army with his the one general that's really gonna that I'm gonna talk about more is Parminion, who's his dad's favorite general. He had a lot of others that come back. So Seleucus, uh, Ptolemy, and Tigus, um, Hephaestion, who's his best friend. Uh, but anyway, Parminian is this old veteran who's just a total tactical genius. So they go across the Hellas Point into Turkey, uh, his whole army, and as the ship approached the coast, he takes his spear, he sticks it in the ground, uh, and then declares that the whole of Asia would be won by Macedonian spear. Is that where he... When did he get the Gordian knot? That's, like, that's way later. Yeah, yeah. He, he defeats the Gordian knot. He says, I will rule Asia since I cut it. Well, that's a master of the yeah master yeah. war. So then, yeah. and Plutarch says that he went to Troy. So he take his he took his men to Troy to be to sacrifice to Achilles, because this is like he's obsessed with Achilles and Patrocles. He sees himself as Achilles and Hephaestion as uh, Patrocles. So he goes, he goes. This is what Plutarch says. He passed the Hellespont and at Troy sacrificed to Minerva and honored the memory of the heroes who were buried there. With solemn libations, especially Achilles, whose gravestone be anointed, and with his friends, as the ancient custom is, ran naked around the sepulchre and crowned it with garlands, declaring how happy he esteemed him in having, while he lived, so faithful a friend, and when he was dead, so famous a poet to proclaim his actions. Sounds like my birthday. It's like a good Saturday night. <laughs> Ran around naked and talked about how you're going to be the new Achilles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Covering yourself in olive oil and oh running around. That's like awesome. Uh, exfoliate. Exfoliate. <laughs> and he just kind of, he goes around, and finally Darius decides that he needs to deal with this kid. And so he, <laughs> Finally. Yeah, yeah. After running around naked. <laughs> yeah, and you know, the Persians are very confused about Greeks and nudity. This happens at Thermopylae, too. Xerxes sees, um, he sees the Spartans anointing themselves with oil, being butt naked, and he's very confused. And, like, what are they doing? These guys are such losers. And it turns out they were anointing themselves for death. And so he doesn't, they don't get that. It's like Understand. standing at, like, But to be fair, who would want to get naked in, like, the the eastern desert, right? Compared with, like, temperate Greece? Fine, why not? They're just standing at, like, opposite ends of, like, the battlefield. But they're naked over there, like, from each other. Gross! <laughs> Put on some clothes! <laughs> we don't want to see that! <laughs> What's the problem, man? Just hanging some brain. <laughs> <laughs> so his army, Alexander's army, had 25,000 Macedonians and about 15,000 Greeks and Thracians. Now, why, why were the Greeks, who he defeated, want to, want to fight with him? Uh, hostages. <laughs> He's basically, he doesn't really put them in many of his battles, and it's basically like a warning sign to the rest of Greece. Like, you fuck up, you rebel, I'm going to kill 15,000 of your best soldiers. Um, but all the officers are Macedonian. Of course. And so Darius sends 40,000 Persians, 20,000 Greeks to go stop him. The The Persian army is so ridiculously large that I'll say these... I'll, I'm going to say bigger numbers, and it, it just won't even seem like that much. And then you've got to take into context of, like, what the population yeah. was back then. So he has 60,000 guys to stop Alexander. And they decide at, the, at 334 B.C., they decided to take up at the Granicus River, and it's 60 feet across, pretty fast, pretty steep. Uh, Persians on one side, the Greeks on the other, and they they lined it up. The Persians had it's 13,000 Macedonians with 5,000 cavalry versus 5,000 Greek infantrymen in 10,000 Persian cavalry. So the Persians even have their own Greek mercenaries who hate Alexander so much. And the, the idea of being conquered by a lesser people, the Macedonians, that they're willing to fight with the Persians, whom 150 years earlier, they were talking about how racially inferior they were. The Greeks are the most xenophobic people on earth. Or the ancient Greeks. Greeks now are fine. <laughs> uh, All right, you said what you said. 
You you lost Not like really a, the same. Yeah, you obviously. lost like a key viewership now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the Greeks are are large. We oh, love I'm... your podcast in Mykonos. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but it's the worst tactical deployment anyone could have be ever the title done. Of this Greeks are the most xenophobic people in the world. <laughs> Ancient Greeks are the most xenophobic people. Uh, in history. Okay. Uh, so they put the five thousand Greek infantrymen behind the ten thousand Persian cavalry and scythed chariots, which was their super weapon, in front of a river. So they have sandwiched the cavalry between infantry in the back and a river in front of them. How the hell are you going to keep the initiative with cavalry if you have to cross a 60-foot-wide river that's steep and fast? The whole point of cavalry, right, is that you can surround them easily and break through. And and then to trap them so they can't even pull back and wait for Alexander to cross. <sighs> Persians are so, so dumb. Uh, they do have a great Greek general. His name, he has such a cool name, Mimnon of Rhodes. Like, cool. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's a cool name. I wish I was like him. Mimnon. What kind of a name is Adrian? Why was my name Mimnon? <laughs> Mimnon of Rhodes. I'm naming my, my first child Mimnon of Rhodes. The, the Macedonians, they cross the river under a lot of arrow fire, but they're such good soldiers and they have such excellent training that they don't care and keep going and push the Persians back and then... Uh, Alexander cuts across diagonally, kind of surprising the Persians, and literally, I mean, he just hacks his way through their line and wins. And the, the Persians don't know what to do. They're scythed chariots. Their whole, their A-bomb, their machine gun got stuck in mud. <laughs> they ran it across. They didn't think enough that, like, hey, right next to a river, the soil is muddy. Oops. Dumbass. It's their territory. <laughs> they don't even know their own land. Nice. Yeah, and... It's like, good way to go out. That's, like, that, pretty cool. Yeah, during the battle... So, you're gonna see this more. Stuck Alexander is obsessed with killing uh, high-ranking people. He <laughs> wants to kill them all. He wants to kill all the Persians. Because, uh... They, they killed they, his they, father. They killed his they father, yeah. Did it. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, I forgot. So, he sees... I got this from, so uh... the Indians. Uh, so, did everyone else. Ancienthistory.com mm -hmm. or something, but is. Uh, he noticed Mithridates, who's Darius' son, writing. So he goes after him. He stabs him in the face. And then a Persian commander, Rosaces, Rosakes, um, hits Alexander on the head with his sword, cracks his helmet. Alexander stabs him. Another Persian commander, Spithridates, uh, <laughs> Wow. Goes to attack Alexander, but then Cletus the Black, who's one of Alexander's bodyguards, cuts his arm off. <laughs> Hold on Wait, there. that's a big name change from Whoa. Cletus to what? <laughs> of Rhodes. Cletus the Black. Like Cletus from oh, from like... yeah, these very elegant Greek names to Cletus. <laughs> <laughs> I, am I? I'm probably butchering the pronunciation. Cleitus something. It, we'll say we'll say Cleitus. Oh, it's got an accent on it. So. No, it's does not have an accent. Oh, it's is that just a mark? It's like Cletius. It's an it has I. an I. Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Are you accent. familiar with the English alphabet, Nick? The I'm Latin, sorry. the Latin alphabet. Um, I'm going to hit you on the head with the sword now. <laughs> but in this one battle, the first time that Alexander fights the Persians, he killed two thirds of their commanders, and it was him personally, pretty much. He killed two thirds of their entire commanders. Who puts two thirds of your commanders in one battle? Eggs in a basket Smart. is literally all your generals in one battle. The Persians? Yeah, the Persians. <laughs> uh, then it's smooth sailing till the Battle of Issus. Not really. He actually has to go around the coast, and he is almost defeated by Memnon because this guy is fighting a delaying action. And he, he keeps getting held up with city-states that are uh, these stupid Greek coastal cities that are well-fortified, and he just can't, he can't get to them. Uh, he finally... He conquers uh, a lot of the Greek city-states. The last one, I'm blanking on the name of it. He he kills all, pretty much all the Greek mercenaries. Uh, at going back to Granicus, he kills three thousand out of five thousand, and then sends the rest to go work in the mines in Macedon. And then after he conquers all these coastal cities, he goes to Gordium, which is home of the Gordian knot. Uh, yeah. And it's this guy's like, you know, whoever can, it's the most complicated knot in the world, whoever can undo it uh, will have all of Asia under his command. And Alexander basically says, 
cool, and takes his sword out and cuts it in half. What? And they're like, uh, I guess that counts. <laughs> like, <laughs> rule Asia. God damn it, when we think of that earlier. <laughs> Yeah, the fucking Darius tried to untie the whole thing. <laughs> Loser. Yeah, because the whole thing was like you couldn't find the beginning of the rope and you couldn't find the end. Oh. And so he was like... Mm-hmm. And just cuts in half. Uh, and then at Issus, he finally gets to fight Darius in person. It's actually Alexander there. It's actually Darius there. Uh, Darius... It's over Darius. Basically, Alexander yeah, splits his army in half and sends uh, Parmenian to go capture Issus. It's in Syria now, I believe. Uh, then he goes oh. down south. So Parmenian's in the north, Alexander's in the south. Uh, there's a little mountain range, and on the other side of that is Darius. So Darius goes around the mountain range to the north to capture Issus, thinking that he is cutting the uh, Macedonians in half, but in reality, Parmenian and Alexander... So I got to... They combined their army once more. But the... Here's here's where the size of the Persian army... These are low estimates. These are modern estimates on the low end that I took. 11,000 cavalry, 10,000 Greek mercenaries, 10,000 Persian immortals, and 80,000 infantry. 80,000 infantrymen. What's that? Like 111,000? Almost 120,000 men. To face Alexander, who has 5,000 cavalry and 20,000 infantry. It's like 10 West Texas towns. Yeah, versus <laughs> one, like, one smallish West Texas town. You know it's like a, you, you know it's like bad news for the other side when the army you're fighting against has a unit called Immortal. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they basically, again, here's the problem, the Persians deploy ineffectively so he basically crunches his army together because it's like a mountain pass uh doesn't darius escape yeah he, he's a cow yeah he keeps running away okay. uh it's a it's near the coast so it's sandwiched between a mountain range to the west and the coast to the east and he's deployed in the middle of that so his army's kind of sandwiched um another river crossing that's just what how the persians deploy they like to deploy on one side of the river force the macedonians to attack so the Persian line, from their per- perspective, is the cavalry on the right, Greeks, immortals in Persian infantry, and more Greeks in the center, and then Persians on the left flank, Persian infantry on the re- left flank. flank. Alexander has um, cavalry, phalanx, and then companion cavalry. So he's, he's kind of in a similar way. and um, No immortals, though. Yeah, well, yeah, he doesn't have immortals. How rookie mistake. Yeah, how cocky do you have to be to name a unit immortal? You have to be Knowing that they have died versions. many times. <laughs> they died at Thermopylae. You know, immortals got killed at Thermopylae. They got killed at Marathon. Hey, Alexander doesn't know that. <laughs> and they still name them immortals. That's so dumb. All right, immortals. Uh, what happened to Steve? <laughs> uh, he was mortal among <laughs> immortals. <laughs> he retired. <laughs> we don't talk about Steve. <laughs> So the Persian cavalry crosses the river and attacks Parmenian, who's in charge of some cavalry of his own. Uh, the phalanx moves across the river under heavy fire. They, they do the same thing again. They move under really heavy fire, push back the Persians. And then Alexander, out of nowhere, kind of leads a cavalry charge into the Persian left. As Parmenian is starting to fall back, the Macedonians are getting kind of pushed back. Uh, because there's just so many goddamn Persians. There's a hundred thousand of them. If every mass, if every twenty thousand Macedonian man killed like two people, he, he's only knocked out half of the Persian infantry. And they're meeting Greek phalanxes. They're meeting Greek hoplites. These guys are pushing them back. And um, Alexander again gets off his cavalry horse. Well, I guess that makes sense. Gets off his horse with As all his, men. To his infantry horse. <laughs> right, and then. Yeah, Bo- he and his cavalrymen dismount, is what I'm saying. And they kill a bunch of Persians and break through and then surround in the back. And they, they sandwich him. That happens a lot with the Persians. Darius retreats. He gets super freaked out and runs away. And he leaves behind a few people who are of no importance to him, including his mom, his uh, wife, and his children. What, 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 what losers? His wife are very <laughs> similar. <laughs> Well, no, that's um, Darius. I don't know about Darius. And then in 332, that was uh, 333. They have a weird mom thing. 
Yes. Yeah, all the, all the generals have weird mom <laughs> problems. Someone could do a study of the effects of mama boys on society. <laughs> That's an history. episode for another day. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do a mama, mama boys. boys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then 332, he meets... Mama's boy. Meets somewhere that he almost loses for the first time, and that's Tyre. Uh, it's an island city off the coast of what was Phoenicia, which is now like Lebanon and Syria. Mm-hmm. And it's a Phoenician town and that's a mile, or sorry, a kilometer away from the coast. And so Alexander can't reach them, and he wants to use his infantry to his advantage. So he builds a mole, bridge, dam, whatever you want to call it, across kind of a long and natural causeway, so it's not very deep water to begin with, but he just stacks these rocks out for a kilometer to reach nice. these guys. And he sets up all his siege equipment and marches his men across. But then out of nowhere, this Phoenician navy comes from Tyre and uh, like basically lines both sides of it and burns down all his stuff. Burns down all his work. All, all his, his siege towers. All his toys, yeah. Um, so he kind of takes a step back and realizes that he's going to need to attack with the navy luckily for him this guy's the most he's got the best luck too really up until the end he's got the best luck (laughs) yeah the the three did it (laughs) yeah the three other phoenician cities at the time biblos arwad and sidon are like hey you can give us we'll, we'll give you our navies we pledge allegiance to you here's our navies and what it really was was captured persian navy ships Oh. That yeah, because when the Persians, <laughs> yeah, the Persians just left all their ships there, and so they basically like, they did the modern equivalent of like, pledging allegiance to Alexander with AK forty sevens that Russians left behind in the Eastern Bloc. <laughs> it's a, I mean it's a dime a dozen, but regardless, he, he goes in and he they they tried to block the port off to keep him from entering with these giant stones, and he just used crane ships to move them <laughs> away. <laughs> What do an ancient? What is an ancient crane ship like? Like, that's ridiculous. Anyway, so he moves it out and then defeats them. Pretty cool. And then just for for the inconvenience of making him build these siege towers for nothing, he decides to massacre the entire city, burn it to the ground, and sell all the people into slavery that he that doesn't kill. That seems to be his thing. He's very emotional. <laughs> you made me build siege towers. I'm gonna enslave all your people. <laughs> I'm going to sell them all into slavery and kill the rest. The rest can work in the mines. Yeah, really. Uh, then he finally goes to Egypt. And Egypt is kind of like... Egypt. The France of ancient times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they try and fight a few times, doesn't really work out, they, they surrender just... the, we- the rest, yeah. So he, he goes there, and they're like, We pledge allegiance to you, Alexander. You are our new pharaoh. You are liberated from Persia. Alexandria, is that one of the cities he... Yeah, he one of, that's maybe the most famous of Alexandrias, but don't worry, Nick, there's 69 other Alexandrias all across the world. Um, and so he goes to Egypt, and they're like, Oh, you are the son of Amon-Ra, the sun god. And then he goes like... Wait, he, yes, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Samuel. Yeah. Wasn't he the son of Zeus? Right. Well, Religion the Macedonians things. believe in this thing called Zeus Amon, and that's a combination of two. So they're saying, yeah, Amon Ra's. That works out perfectly. Amon yeah. Ra is real. How convenient for Because Alexander. he's Zeus. And so they say that he needs to. They're like, all right, well, if you're really the sun god, walk across this desert to this weird, like, temple cult place where they worship him. And. Um, it's gonna be a movie. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't it a movie? Yeah, it was a movie. <laughs> And he walks across the desert, and he's blessed by rains and ravens. How depressed of a society do you have to be to think ravens are a good omen? I mean, they're by rain. the entire so society was like a thirteen-year-old emo kid. <laughs> yeah, isn't, isn't like uh, crow meat supposed to be like really rain. bitter or something? Yeah, well, I don't think it. They weren't like the crows were trying to eat. No, no, the crows were the ravens were leading him across the desert while a storm cloud was continually overhead to keep him alive, and he gets to wow. the. It's he like, gets to the temple with a lot of his bodyguards and swords and spears. And they say, you are the son of Amon Ra. You are the sun god. Uh, and so he's like, good. Exactly what I wanted to hear. Solid. I, I'm glad. And then he gets word know. that uh, Darius has assembled a larger army uh, in Babylon and wants to fight him again. This is going to be the end all battle. So Alexander gets all his forces, comes back from his little vacay in the desert, 
And, Sorry. <laughs> and he takes it's forty seven thousand Macedonians uh, versus a hundred thousand Persians. Again, oh, yeah, solid. this is the low estimate of Persians. There's probably the the ancient estimates go anywhere from two hundred fifty thousand to a million. Oh, a uh, million. Mm, I think a oh, million is a little all? bit of a stretch. Just, I just think maybe I, I would say two hundred thousand. I think two hundred thousand is maybe the most reasonable because Darius, if he's spending years, this is two years since they last saw each other at Issus, then I think he's going to put together a pretty good army. Uh, he Darius alone has forty thousand cavalrymen. Wow, forty thousand. He has almost the same number of cavalrymen as Alexander does infantrymen. That's not good. He has uh, 150 elephants. Whoa. Oh, wow. Possibly. Although, there's debate whether they were used. Wait, 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 wait. The Persians? Mm-hmm. Oh, they don't know if they used them or not. Because then Alexander's men talk about seeing elephants for the first time in India. Yeah. So I doubt it. I think that may just be some, like, talking him yeah. up. They, he did have uh, a bunch of scythe chariots again. That's, again, the super weapon. 10,000 Greeks. Did he get it stuck in mud again? No. Okay. But Alexander defeated them. Alexander, he overslept that day. So Parmenion tells him, we need to attack at night, because they're kind of camping near each other, as ancient battles were. And Parmenion says, we need to attack at night, surprise him, kill him. And Alexander says, no, we'll attack tomorrow at noon. And he sleeps in till noon, and then wakes up late, and is like, all right, let's go. Okay, go. Come on, let's go, let's go conquer Persia. I'll so, conquer Persia in ten minutes. <laughs> God, come bomb. back and get me. Uh, oh, just, just fifteen minutes, then I can conquer Persia. So the the Persian line is deployed in regular fashion again. So you've got the the chariots out front, you've got the infantry behind, the cavalry on the flanks, um, and, and Darius is in the center of this on his with his personal escorts. And Alexander kind of lines up at an angle, kind of like an angled bow, so that his cavalry is kind of near the center of. Um, Darius's line, and it kind of stretches down so that they won't be outflanked. So the, out of all of a sudden, uh, he starts to move right. Alexander starts to stretch right. Darius moves left, and then attacks him with his cavalry. Huge battle of cavalry ensues, and then at the same time, Darius sends his chariots forward, and the Macedonians beat the chariot system by letting them go through. They just let them go through the line, and then they sling them to death and shoot them with arrows and stuff. They thought that they were the crazy nuclear bomb metal sword chariots. Yeah, but it's that for Persia, so it doesn't really count. (laughs) (laughs) Everything Persia touches turns to sand, trash. It's horrible. (laughs) They just mess everything up. How do you have like a a three to one superiority in numbers? And lose. In an open battle like this. And, yeah, and lose. Oh, at I'll, noon. I'll tell you why. Day. Yeah, I you, forgot you what run noon was. You run straight at fifteen foot long pikes. <laughs> we are immortals. Yeah, <laughs> they were there too. Immortals were in the center. Those guys again. Uh, so Parmenian is on the Macedonian left, and he's actually getting pushed back. The Persians are actually defeating Parmenian. There's just so damn many of them against these uh, Macedonians, and then Alexander. Kills a bunch of the Persian cavalry, beats them back, and Darius sees that uh, Darius the the immortals are the line directly in front of him, so they're kind of the second line. Uh, he sends them to go finish off Parmenian's troops, and at that moment he's opened himself up, and Alexander rides straight at him to kill him. I mean, just like dead at him, and Darius runs away because he's a coward. Uh, Alexander gets in a Big hissy fit because he wants to have killed him right then and there. Seems to be like Darius's signature move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this time he didn't leave his wife and kids because he'd already done that earlier. Oh, they're, they're, uh, what a classy guy. Yeah, he's class very, act. Very, very classy guy. You, I guess you can come with me this time. <laughs> hurry up, hurry up. Uh, Run away faster. Alexander's Road like, oh, I want to kill him. I'll kill him. I want to kill him now. And they're like, hey, dumbass, your line is cracking. You're about to lose your line. So he just sandwiches the Persians again, comes back around, frees up Parmenian, and then they kind of, the center line is holding, but it's not going anywhere, and then they fold around on that. Uh, at the same time, Sparta decides to rise up. So now's a good time, right when our hormonal teenage king is freaking out because he didn't get to kill his favorite nemesis. <laughs> My nemesis. I wanted to kill him now. Yeah, and then they 
Sparta gets put down. Again. <laughs> uh, and then Alexander spends the next months, almost a year, chasing down Darius. Just going after the guy. Just he wants to kill him. Where, it's like where his equivalent of like the 330, We're at 330 BC, uh, near the... Where are we geographically? Uh, what's the Iranian mountain range? So we're in the like... We're in the desert. Deep in the desert. Desertous mountains, That's basically. Fun. Uh, Punjab desert... Yeah. region. So, like, kind of similar to New Mexico, like, Lone Survivor area. Um, that's, like, the geographic zone. Uh, and then this guy named Bessus of Bactria, who's, Bactria is the kingdom right next to where India is, in the north of India. Bessus kills uh, Darius, proclaims himself king of kings, then realizes what Alexander's gonna do to him if he finds <laughs> out that he just killed his favorite bad guy. So he um, gives him his head, and he's like, oh, I did this for you, King of Kings. Oh, he uh, he tripped over my sword. <laughs> Sliced his head clean off. And then Alexander gets so pissed. He's so upset that Bessus killed his guy. He's been guy. Like, going after him for years. Yeah. So he immediately murders Bessus, tortures him to death. Fun. And then gives Darius a, a king's funeral because he's like, God damn it, I wanted to kill him. Ah, he's going nuts at this point. He's like 26 years old. At this point? Yeah, another... <laughs> 26. Is this compared to, like, the sanity before? So, in, in 330, uh, a bunch of his top generals, including Philotas... Philotas. Uh, decide that they're going to murder him, because they're like... <laughs> they're like, he's nuts. we got to kill this, this crazy fucker. And, whoa, um, why? Whoa. But look what he's done for them. He's... Okay. Yeah, look where they are, though. They're in the middle of the desert, all the way away from their homes in Macedon. Oh, yeah. and they, they've been fighting for years for this guy. They're not that long. And long. their king's having a temper Fair tantrum. Yeah, their king is going nuts. This is after he went to Babylon and just, like, just went nuts. Is this where he makes him give it? Makes them give him their water? No, no, not yet. No, not, not yet. yet. We're not at that Not at No, that we're not at that yet. yet. Oh, boy. Um, we'll get there. Yeah. So, to prove he's not nuts... This is this was what proves his sanity. When he hears about the plot to murder him, again, this just proves his sanity, guys. He murders everyone accused of it. <laughs> kills them all. <laughs> I swear I'm not crazy, guys. <laughs> he kills everyone accused of it, everyone that he thinks knew of it. He stalins them. He purges his officers. He stalins them. Oh. And then, That's always like a good person to be compared to. Yeah. Stalin. And then he kills uh, Philotas. He gives him a trial. It's kind of a famous trial. I won't really go over it. It's a little boring. It's basically Philotas being no, like, please go over it. Kill, kill me. Like, you won't. And then he does. He tortures him to death. <laughs> okay, and then, sure, according sure. to Macedonian custom, he's like, well, now I've got to kill his dad, Parmenion, my most loyal general who's helped Aww. me win everything. And he's a veteran of Philip's Wars. And the army's Dude, like... Does he kill him? Yeah, the oh, army. Yeah, he yeah, kills I know. his best friend? No, he doesn't kill no, his no. best friend. That's Hephaestion. He kills his best general, though. And Parmenian. Yeah, wow. and Parmenian's away. He's up. He's still in Babylon. Wow. Alexander? Yeah, he's... He was his best friend? Yeah, so they think that because uh, Plutarch draws comparison between Achilles, Patrocles, and then uh, Alexander and Hephaestion, that they, like, they were the same. Like... That they slept together, yeah. Although, they, again, this is, like, ancient Greek time that's, like, they don't see that as weird. It's just, like, a normal thing. Yeah, it's, like, thing. Well, also it's like of... women are beautiful, men can also be beautiful. Why not sleep with both? Yeah. You and know, have, it's make not that bad considering women. that a lot of the Greeks were also pedophiles. So it's, like, Yeah, it's Athens. Fine. You know, I don't get that. Macedon wants to style themselves after Greece, a bunch of xenophobic, racist pedophiles. Ancient Greek. Yeah, ancient, ancient Greek. Greek. Again, we got it. <laughs> when I say Greek, I mean ancient Greece. Um, so then he sends a guy to go kill Parmenion, and the army is freaking out. They're like, "Why would you kill your greatest general?" I mean, he's basically going to kill his Zhukov. His yeah, he's going to kill his like big guy, and he does. He doesn't have any quarrel about it because he's not crazy. Seriously, guys, he's he's really sane. He killed his best general for a reason because they help. Because he helped kill Philip II, his dad. And then I'm they, not crazy. The voices just told me that uh, these guys are going to kill me. <laughs> he has a, a party to, I guess, celebrate. Oh, Samuel, keep in mind, all these people conspired to kill his father. Yeah. Stim. So. Take they, over. <laughs> oh my god, that movie. The, they basically, um, he throws a party, I guess, to celebrate 
purging all his officer corps. Oh, oh my phone. Yeah, it's definitely something to celebrate. And then this guy calls party. him out. This guy calls him out while he's drunk. So they're both drunk at this party. Alexander less so. And the guy is like, oh, you're the Sun King loser, like something like that. He makes fun of him. <laughs> and he, he calls him out for killing all his generals. And he calls him out for being so full of himself. And he's, you're like, he's like, you're crazy. And Alexander says, no, I'm not crazy, and stabs him to death. And then becomes suicidal because he killed one of his friends. So he's really a sane guy at this point. A suicidal megalomaniac who's purged all his officers personally. And has conquered... And, and, and stabbed there. a man to death. Stabbed a man to death for calling him out. In front of others? Oh, yeah, at a party. Oh. And it was one wow. of his best friends, so he stabs the guy to death and then tries to kill himself because he realized what he did. Will you come to prom with me? <laughs> if all your friends were stabbing people to death, would you stab people to death? <laughs> oh, my God. And so and then in 327, he just kind of fiddles around, and he, he marries uh, Roxana. That's his wife's name, which I think is such a weird yeah, name. Yeah, it's like a like, modern... Like, that like is it's it the name of Sam? Yeah, yeah, it's a police song. <laughs> uh, in 327, he says like, "I want to conquer India," and they're like, "Where, where the hell's that?" And he's like, "Well, it's Bactria. Uh, we've got to kill him because Bessus from Bactria killed Darius." I'm like, "All right, just stop lying about it. Fine, we'll go conquer it, but it's because you're nuts and you want to." And so. He goes to India, and this guy named King Porus, who is over seven feet tall in ancient <laughs> Whoa, times, what? meets him. Yeah. He's like a giant. He's, a, he's actually a giant. He meets him. It's pretty even. So for the first time, it's an even match for Alexander. Now, if Alexander can overcome steep odds, what do you think he's going to do in an even battle? Uh, 40,000 infantry for Porus. This time, he does have 150 elephants. Oh, good. And they, nice. they see them. They know that they're there. And they had the little tusk weapons on them? No, no. probably not. That's a little later. Maybe. I, they, not they, like could, they could have just attached some stuff. It's not like a lot of those elephants survived. <laughs> yeah. uh, 4,000 cavalry and then 1,000 chariots versus 40,000 Macedonians and 5,000 cavalry. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a river. It's called the Hydaspes. And it's a river, and the Indians are trying to prevent the Macedonians from crossing, and so they're shadowing them. And Alexander leads a feint. He leaves his generals uh, to kind of stand in front of the river to pretend like they're going to cross there, and then he secretly crosses behind. And um, then it's, it's game time. They're going to fight. So Alexander's crossed with however many troops he has, lines up in phalanx again, goes to battle... Um, the the horse archer he sends his horse archers to go kill the elephants doesn't work the elephants crash through the lines even almost break through in a lot of points doesn't really work they figure out like oh if you you know kill the guys on top and then disembowel these damn things they'll actually die otherwise you can't they can't can't kill them um, and then Alexander just kind of goes nuts and is running around. And then <laughs> naked, <laughs> naked again. Uh, and so while running away is Darius's signature. Was Darius's signature <laughs> move? His, Going his insane head. is Alexander's right. signature his move. His head ran away from him. I guess and that's right. Uh, and then Craterus comes out. So now that Parmenian's dead, Craterus is the new guy. Craterus comes out. He crosses because now all the Indians are sand are pressed in really tight. He crosses the river. Kills them all. Big route. And um, then Porus, who's seven feet tall on his own personal war elephant, hops yeah. down to stand to face this, like, effeminate, whiny little man <laughs> with blonde hair. And this guy's like a huge Indian king. And uh, Alexander says, how would you like to be treated? You know, I, I don't know if he's trying to be... Appar- okay, so here's the thing. Plutarch says he asks this because he's so uh, impressed by Porus's bravery. That he's not going to kill him. That he's not going to kill him. What hearing I think, everything, hearing like all the stuff that I've heard about Alexander so far, I kind of have... A okay, little, little bit of technical difficulty. Anyway, uh, Porus hops down, faces this little whiny bitch, and is like, you know, how do you want to be treated? And Porus says, treat me like a king would treat another king, Alexander. That's a good response. Yeah, good right? Response. And then Alexander says, fine, you'll be able to hold on to your province. Oh. Yeah. But that's, you know, take that in context. So that's nice what he's been guy. doing the whole time. Because he, he's so lazy, he doesn't want to... He kills, like, the first second and then gives the 
the third in command. Like mm, now, he usually uh, leaves the first in in command. I thought he killed the like the first. You're two talking about he, he he kept the Persian satrap system. He just leaves these guys, these regional governors. Yeah, so that they can like keep the peace. They know what they're doing. They have kept the Persian Empire alive way after it's supposed to have fallen, and so Alexander just leaves them in charge. Uh, and then he goes to some little village to get tribute, to make him look how godly he is. And they shoot him in the ribs with an arrow. It's like, fuck you. And they shoot him in the ribs, and he, he almost dies. And then, you know, as these warlike savages, he kills them all and sells the rest into slavery. The classic. Yeah. yeah and yeah. then he wants to keep going. He wants to push farther into India. And that's when his men say, we want to go home, Alexander. We're tired. Uh, please, we're like, in India. We're in India. We didn't even know this <laughs> continent went this far. We want to go home. And he's like, no, no, we must press on. And they're like, dude, seriously, we never thought <laughs> we'd down. We, we never thought we'd say this, but we want to go back to Macedon. We want to go back to our rocks and our goats. For the love of God, let us go home. I mean, probably our kids nice. are now like, yeah. we they were born, and now they're like fifteen. Now, now yeah. they run the house. <laughs> yeah. And so he is apparently so horrified by this that he gives in because he's so benevolent, and he takes Plutarch says, oh, he took the most convenient route across. <laughs> Which is a desert. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Uh, water time. Turns out it would have been super easy, and he knew about it, to take ships down the Hedaspes, down a couple more rivers, into the ocean, and then sail back to the coast. Hmm. It would have been... Where there is water. <laughs> it would have been six times, six times faster. So he makes the march across the desert with nothing but what they have on their back. Sounds after they like had, after they had marched yeah. through such rain, and they're... luckily another rain cloud follows Alexander. Across but no the... ravens. This time. If by if by rain cloud you mean vultures and constant <laughs> drought and dehydration, and then death. yes, that's like almost gets, a raven. Yeah, he gets ten thousand of his men killed in this march on on the way back to Susa. Now, what the the propaganda bullshit is that every day he was thirsty one day and he'd run out of water, so all the men pour their water into a willingly. giant... Willingly. Uh, yeah, willingly. Into a giant cup for him, and he drinks it and is refreshed and leads his army back to Susa. What, what really happened was probably, give me your goddamn water. I'm thirsty. You no, this ignorant. is our water. <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> you ignorant hicks. Uh, and so he... They finally make it across, and he decides again to have a big party. And then oh, yeah. he gets sick from a drink. And that's uh, pretty much that. And dies. They don't know if it was... They think it could have been typhoid fever. Didn't they think it was malaria also? Yeah, it could have been malaria. could have been typhoid fever. He could have gotten food poisoning. Oof. Or the one I would like to believe is that his liver failed because he was an alcoholic. Uh, I wish it was food poisoning. They'd be like, it was the dip. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest conqueror the ancient world ever knew got brought down by... Dip. Steve, Steve's gross bean dip. <laughs> <laughs> what what killed Alexander? Ones. Another king? No. Uh, potato <laughs> salad that got left out for a little too long. <laughs> <laughs> left out on the horses. <laughs> <laughs> left out in the heat. I've left, I've left this in my car the entire march through the Alexander's desert. Alexander's You think he'll notice? <laughs> Alexander's potluck. Someone... Didn't Everyone wa- bring something. Hands. I'm making pigs in a blanket. <laughs> Cratrus, what are you bringing? Uh, I'll bring some coleslaw. He forgot to wash his hands. Perfect. He yeah, it. he wiped. He's like a Chipotle Perfect. worker. He wiped his hands, wiped his ass with his hands and didn't wash it and made burritos for Alexander. <laughs> oh my god, I think I've got bloody diarrhea now. Okay. He's on his deathbed and they say, they keep asking, who's going to take over the empire? Who's going to take over the empire? And what, he either says nothing and dies, or he might have said uh, kratistos, which means the strongest to the strongest. Wow. What he, what he could have really said Great. was Craterus, oh who wasn't God. there. He wasn't in Babylon when he dies. Uh, he was in, the, in another part of the empire because Alexander had sent 10,000 of his veterans home. They, they were like, God. please let us go home. He's like, fine, fine, I release you. Uh, that didn't happen. Here's the dumb thing, though. They had families in Persia. So now, 
there's Alexander has like an army that he can have there, half Persian, half Macedonian people that he can train, but he dies. I think he might have really said Craterus because that was his second in command. That would make sense. But he wasn't there, and but the words are so similar that Alexander the rest... Alexander was insane, so... Krateros! Uh, I heard Krustistos. What about you guys? Yeah, I heard Krustistos also. Yeah, he was saying to the strongest, <laughs> let's fight. And then they all separate into their own empire. Seleucus takes the Seleucids. Ptolemy takes Egypt. He, he starts at Ptolemaic Egypt. Cleopatra, uh, the one you were yeah, talking about. Cleopatra, before. who had a huge <laughs> nose. That it's was, not a bad thing. No, so, yeah, not, but the, I just think that's funny that it's like she's this woman of ancient reputed beauty. And she hey, it might have just been a long schnoz. Huge schnoz. schnoz. Uh, Wasn't Ptolemy like her like cousin or something, too? She is a Ptolemy. Yeah, she's yeah, Cleopatra Ptolemy. Ptolemy the 13th is her brother. Her oh, that's great. Right. Yeah, I think she married two of her brothers. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, didn't she sleep with her little brother or something? Okay, we're not talking about Cleopatra Ptolemy. I don't care about Cleopatra Ptolemy right now. Um, here's a cool thing, though. There's a group of people in Pakistan who are white. They're completely white. Some of them have blonde hair, a lot of them have blue eyes. There's some of them in Lebanon. Uh, they're called the Kalash. <coughs> Kalash, something like that. They worship this kind of weird... It's like ancient Hinduism, maybe primitive animism. Uh, but they don't know where these people came from. They did DNA tests, and they're like, yeah, you're from... You're European. We don't know how you got here, though. And they claim to be from... Yeah, they claim to be from Alexander's soldiers. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Nice. So, I mean, jokes on Alexander's soldiers, they left their families behind, and now we have the Kalash people. He named 70 cities for the himself Kalashi again. people. And he named one for Bucephalus. By the way, uh, this is kind of sad. Bucephalus gets killed at Hydaspes. Uh, his, his, the greatest horse of all time got shot with a bunch of arrows and died at, at the Hydaspes. He cared more for that horse than his general, his top... General. He cared more for that horse than than maybe himself. He he could be a good guy at times. For to a sense. horse. To a horse. The rest he a sold really beautiful, slavery. great horse that was super loyal to him. And then yeah, and then he died and his empire fell apart. Now then we got the Hellenistic Age. But I want to know what do you, what are your impressions what about Alexander now? now? Cool for a little while. Wait, who? My impressions of Alexander? Yeah, I think he's a chill man. <laughs> Sold a lot of people to slavery. Um, I don't know. Seemed pretty, pretty batshit crazy. <laughs> so I feel like for most, like, especially like most like like generals, right? But especially for most like ancient generals, they seem like really badass if you read like the Wikipedia summary of them. <laughs> but then once you start learning like more about them, you kind of more and more start to go. Oh. I, I think tactical Uh-oh. genius yeah, doesn't yeah. equate genius. No, absolutely not. You know, he Alexander, there is no question about that, one of the greatest generals of all time, most definitely in the top two greatest generals ever, Who's maybe top? the best, maybe the best of ancient times. Top one, that's, that's hard. We'll get into that because we've got oh. a few more generals coming on. Um, but he was definitely insane, wasn't... Wasn't a terrible person. I wouldn't say he's a well, he's not a great person. Though. He's not. He's definitely not a great person. But he's not the worst. No, he didn't. Yeah. Like Compared sure. to some. Yeah, yeah. There could be worse. Yeah, he could have like. He's sold just more people. No. He <laughs> was he almost acceptable. He was almost acceptable. That's like all you can ask for in like, <laughs> ancient times. That's ancient. like pretty damn good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the people of, of Iran hate him though. Really? Persian Why? people hate. Alexander. Because he, like... Could kick um, their ass. Yeah. <laughs> he totally embarrassed them and conquered Many times. their empire. I, I forgot what their name for him is. Uh, I'll look this up really quick. Um, but even, like, a couple weeks ago, a giant statue of Alexander, an ancient statue of Alexander, got defaced. Uh, and they wrote Butcherer all over it. So this they're goes still to show... On this. Yeah, they're still on this thousands of years later. People who have no ties to... Alexander in any way. Just there you go. Uh, Iskandar, that's his name. Iskandar, yeah. why? Dude, what does it mean? Alexander. That's it's his. just. Oh, I thought it was gonna. It's be the Arabic. Slower. It's the Arabic of yeah. So they call him Iskandar, and they call him like the White Devil or something, because they they hate his guts. Fair enough. Two thousand years <laughs> later, guys. That's he he brings to the really he brings the Persian Empire to its end. He doesn't bring it to its knees. He doesn't weaken it. He just destroys he, it. 
cuts the head off the snake, then guts the snake, then eats the snake's meat, makes a belt out of the snake skin, frames the snake head, and keeps the rattle as a trophy. Boy, that's a very specific <laughs> analogy there, pal. I wonder if that has anything to do with something Me else. Me killing a snake. No, well, it's, snake. it's because Alexander... Wait, didn't he like snakes? Yeah, he did. Yeah, there we go. He was super into snakes. His mom was into snakes, too. <laughs> yeah, he was. She was. Olympias. Well, thank you for listening. Um, yeah. This podcast was brought to you by Existential Dread. And so this was brought to you by too much time on our hands and, and uh, uh, the need for a creative outlet. Yeah, this, uh, this prod- podcast was brought to you instead of doing homework. <laughs> <laughs> we all finished our homework. That's right. right. No. <laughs> we all finished. No, we did not. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> So next week, the episode will be on Hamilcar and Hannibal Barca. Hamilcar? You are, yeah. That's Ooh. a cool name. The, okay, the Carthaginians have the coolest names. Hanno, Hannibal, Hamilcar, Hasdrubal. Cletus. Cletus is Greek. I, I know, okay. <laughs> Hamilcar has to be probably the weakest of the Hannibal. Yeah, Hannibal's going. And then you're like, yeah, sorry, my name's Hamilcar. <laughs> <laughs> Hamilcar does sound pretty cool. So those two, Hamilcar and Hannibal, are... Hamilcar gets kind of left out. They're for next week, but I will let you know that Alexander may have been the greatest general of ancient times just because he got got there first. What about Angus? Uh, I mean, tactically he's fine. I don't think he's like an amazing general. That's just my opinion, though. Fair enough. But okay, next week is Hamilcar and Hannibal. Hannibal's usually, when you rank the top five greatest generals, it's usually like Alexander, Hannibal, Napoleon, Julius oh. Caesar, mm. uh, Scipio, I forgot. Actually, Scipio gets left off there a lot. It's uh, um, Gustavus Adolphus. Mm. I've heard of him before. That's so, for sure. So join us next week for uh, Hamilcar and Hannibal Barca, the great heroes of Carthage. Right. Check back with us next week when we have a name for our podcast. Yeah, we still haven't named it yet. Well, it's coming later. Whatever.